Welcome, my friends of the interwebs. You know, my last Amtrak video, um, which was my first Amtrak video, uh, it, it went over pretty well, and a lot of you asked to hear more about Amtrak. And um, I've got a lot of stories, good, bad, ugly, you know, all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I could tell you, so. in fact, I'm going to tell you all kinds of stuff. Um, but I don't want to be all about slamming Amtrak because I did have some really great experiences on Amtrak. So I think what I'm going to do is one video uh, that I do will be um, critical of Amtrak, and then the next one will be a good story about an experience that I had with Amtrak, or at least an interesting story, but not necessarily critical of the company. So uh, since the last one was critical, I'm going to do this one as a positive. It's a really neat story, so hopefully you hang out for it. Um, this is why I worked out of Toledo, and I was running Toledo to Pittsburgh, and I would spend a night in Pittsburgh, and then uh, I would come back, bring the train back. And the, I was the assistant conductor on the job, and the conductor that I was working with, uh, his name was Roger. And at that time, the two top guys in national se seniority for Amtrak were both named Roger, and they were both working out of Toledo, Ohio, and they, were, they both got on the railroad in 1941. Now, they started out their careers as freight guys because obviously Amtrak was not not in existence in the 40s. Um, but uh, they ended up uh, being with the freight company, that, and, and then when they had a choice at one point, uh, long before my time, they had a choice between either uh, going to Amtrak and keeping their seniority or going to or, or staying with the freights. And I think a lot of the old timers stayed uh, or went with Amtrak just because, you know, if you've got seniority and you're working passenger trains, you can do that well into old age. Whereas climbing up and down on head ends and, and doing dragging knuckles down a consist uh, as a road uh, or, or, or over the road conductor for a freight company, would it's just difficult to do when you get older. It just really is. Your knees give out on you. It's just, it's just effect of life. So anyway, Roger was a really interesting guy. He had got on the railroad uh, to play ball, to play baseball. Um, and <laughs> it was probably, I think he got it right before World War II started for the United States. And I think he was 17, somewhere around in there. And uh, it was really interesting. I don't know how many of you remember the movie Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner. But they actually talked about, in the old days, uh, um, uh, companies having baseball teams. So this railroad, and I don't remember the name of the railroad Roger started out with, but it had a baseball team, and, and apparently Roger was a hell of a baller. And uh, so they, they hired him on uh, to play ball. And, and, of course, that you know, eventually uh, translated into becoming a conductor. But uh, anyway, so Roger and I are working. He, you know, he's <laughs> older than Moses. And we go to Pittsburgh. Pretty uneventful. There's some really great lists. If you're ever in downtown Pittsburgh, there's a place called uh, the um, God, it's called the Oyster, the Oyster Shop, or oh, I'll have to get that name for you guys. It has the best fish, fish sandwiches on the planet. So anyway, so we do our thing. We do, we spend a night in Pittsburgh and we come back and we get to Cleveland. And <laughs> I'm you know Cleveland was kind of a longer layover for us. It, well, layover in a sense that it was like we were going to be on the platform in Cleveland for like a half an hour. It's normally it wouldn't be, you know, we'd stop, we'd put passengers on, and then we'd highball. But in this particular situation, Cleveland was always like a 20-minute deal or a half-an-hour deal where we were going to be on the platform. So, you know, you got outside, and back then I used to smoke. So, we, you know, we would go outside, we'd smoke on the platform. And Roger, uh, he, being that he was old head, he was, he was, you know, number one in seniority, he never touched a ticket. He didn't, he rarely, to be honest with you, he didn't really like to deal with the passengers. And at his age, you know, who blames him? So... Whenever you worked with Roger, you knew that you were going to have to do all the bullshit work, you know, collecting tickets, dealing with passengers' problems, putting luggage on and off and, and whatnot. So we're sitting on or we're standing on a platform. I'm standing next to Roger, and, and he's talking to, uh, I want to say, with the ticket agent uh, from the Cleveland uh, station. And then he looks at me and says, hey, he goes, uh, it was about five minutes till we were about to pull out, or uh, maybe about ten minutes. He looks at me and goes, hey, get everybody's tickets. And um, so I got up on the train and got my little ticket punch out and, uh, you know, stood at the, at the front of the car and yelled, you know, uh, tickets, tickets, please. And uh, we'd go from, you know, from seat to seat. And there would be seat checks. So I knew who, who had already gave me their ticket. There's this dude, this young guy. I guess he was probably about 20, maybe 21 if that. And he's sitting there and he's got this guitar uh, uh, in the seat next to him. And I said, uh, I need your ticket. And he said, oh, I gave it to the other guy. Well, immediately that ra raises a red flag for me because the other guy hadn't taken a freaking ticket in 30 years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, his seniority basically warranted him to, to do whatever he wanted to, but it wasn't going to be pulling tickets. So I said to him, I said, well, I said, uh, do you have your stub? 
Good man knew he was lying to me. Uh, the odds of him not lying to me, I thought, were pretty, pretty small. And he said, you know, I'm not sure what I did with it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I, I said, I'm going to have to... Um, you know, I'm going to have to go uh, uh, talk to uh, uh, Roger, the conductor. I was, I'm going to talk to him. I said, because to be honest with you, I said, that guy's never pulled any tickets that I've ever seen, ever. And he looked at me and he said, dude, I, listen, I've, I'm a musician. I've got this gig in Chicago. I, buy, I have no money. And I just, I need to get there. And, and he, he said, I just, I just, can you help me out? I've got this paying gig. You know, can you help me out? And I'm like, you know, it ain't my call. You know, I, and I said to him, I go, look, dude, you're going to have to go get a ticket. Or so I said, I, I can't make that call. And uh, he goes, all right. So I go to get off the train. This guy gets off the train, grabs his guitar, and he's walking through the parking lot. And I had told Roger, I said, yeah, I had to, I had to tell the guy that he had to get going because he didn't have a ticket, you know, and da 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 Roger seen that he was carrying a guitar. And uh, he said, what's the story? I said, well, it's, apparently he's a musician. He's got a gig in Chicago. He's got no money. <laughs> and uh, he just wanted a free ride. And he looked at Roger, looked at me, he goes, go get him. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, you just didn't question Roger. So I went running through the parking lot. I caught up with this dude. I said, listen, the conductor wants to talk to you. And the guy says, look, I'm sorry for trying to sneak on a train. I said, no, listen, I don't, that's not it. I said, if, if that was it, he would have had me run after you. Um, I said, why don't you come back? So the dude comes back, and I, I introduce him to Roger. And Roger says, are you any good with that guitar? And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty good. And he goes, what kind of gig you got? He goes, well, you know, it's, it's a paying gig. And, and Roger's like, really? He goes, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you get on the train and you entertain the passengers between here and Chicago with that guitar, you can ride for free. <laughs> now, I was, I was kind of in shock, to be honest with you, to even hear that. But, you know, Roger was the boss. Listen, the, the, in the United States, the conductor is the king. I know engineers don't like to hear that, but it's a fact. Now, in Canada, the engineer is actually in charge of the train. But in the United States, the guy in charge of the train is the conductor. And uh, if the conductor says this is what goes, then that's what goes. That's just the way it is. So this dude gets on the train. <laughs> Roger says to me, he says, listen, go make sure he's good. Because if he's not, tell him to shut the hell up and we'll still get him to Chicago. <laughs> he goes, I don't want him, I don't want him driving to pasture. It's crazy. I get up there. The dude's already got his guitar out. He's introduced himself to everybody in that particular car. And he's he's still and dude is great. I don't remember now what he was uh, what kind of music he was doing or anything, but I remember thinking to myself, yeah, this dude is all right. And the passengers loved him. You know, he was working the crowd. And um, in the end, you know, well, I got we got off in in Toledo. But once you put somebody on the train and, and there's a final destination, you put a, a seat check on there. No. No other crew coming on would have ever questioned, you know, whether they had a ticket or not. So this guy got a free ride, basically. But, you know, I'll tell you what. It was one of my most, most memorable experiences on Amtrak. And I've got a, a million of those. And uh, <laughs> it was just neat. It was neat working with Roger. And I haven't seen Roger in probably 10 years. And hopefully he's still doing well. Um, I wouldn't be one bit surprised to hear he was still working uh, as a conductor. <laughs> but that's another story because uh, maybe the next Roger story I tell won't be so... Uh, it's such a happy one because us young guys really had a difficult time with these fossils. <laughs> they would not retire <laughs> anyway. Uh, but anyway, that's my Amtrak story. Um, it was you had to be there, I guess. But it was it was really really neat. And so now my next Amtrak story, I'll, it won't be so nice. <laughs> I'm gonna do some dirt on Amtrak. So anyway, everybody take care.